In an earlier video, we talked about The Five Languages of Apology by Gary Chapman, which is a great book. It's really powerful. It talks about ways we can apologize to our partner so it really lands. And someone wrote in and said, that's great. I have a partner who apologizes nicely and I, I get the apology. But then he keeps doing the thing that he apologized for. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to know what to do. Well, I'm Reed Mahalko from ReadAboutSex.com. I'm Kathy Bartoli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. And here's our answer. Drop them like a hot potato, lady. Get rid of them. They can't be trusted. <laughs> well, it, in some cases... Are you traumatized? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> you need to apologize. I'm sorry I traumatized you. <laughs> Drop them like a hot potato. <laughs> that, <laughs> did I traumatize you again? No, I was prepared that time. Okay, good. <laughs> but you did repeat the action. I did. Oh, so now what are you going to do? Well, for me, it depends on how important the issue is mm -hmm. and how and the, how much value that person adds to my life in general. So someone who's perpetually late, I have a couple of friends that are always late. Mm -hmm. They always apologize. They say it won't happen again, and they're late the next time. But they're really wonderful friends, and they're not, you know, it's just something I can now... I can just accommodate for. And but being late for you isn't like a deal breaker. Right. If I mean if you're being late for my wedding and you're the maid of honor, not that I ever want to get married, but like that would be a different thing. Like I probably wouldn't ask one of them just to pick me up at an airport if I had to be mm -hmm. home at a certain time. But in terms of going to the movies, I just know I tell them a half an hour before we're supposed to meet. But someone who's not paying the rent or you know, not paying the mortgage when they promise to pay it. Mm -hmm. Um, and we might lose the house. That's a lot bigger deal. Yeah. Um, so my advice, there's two things going on. One, is it the kind of situation where the person just needs more, like better structures? Mm -hmm. um, you need to set your clock, you know, 15 minutes ahead so that you arrive on time. Yeah, but basically, what are you going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again? Yeah, Can you, you need pay? to do auto bill pay. Like, can you support those people in, in a structure so that their behavior doesn't, like, so that that fixes their behavior? Um, the biggest question, the first question you should ask, is their behavior actually crossing a bottom line for you? And by bottom line, I mean, like, you know, you are adamant that, you know, Hitting your children is not acceptable in a relationship. Yeah, no, even once. So they hit you, you're, they hit your kid, they apologize. For me, that we're done. Yeah. Um, but then they hit your kid a second time. Like, that's a, like you're done. Like, that's, I think you should investigate whether that's crossing a bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, if there's a bottom line being crossed, you need to have a serious conversation with them. And also with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I would say have your conversation with yourself, with a friend of yours, who's going to like kind of help witness that conversation. Because my opinion is you should never be crossing bottom lines. You can cross a bottom line the first time for to sure. realize, oh, this is a deal breaker for me. But if you're like third and fourth time crossing a bottom line, this is not healthy and you need to like, you need to get a reality check. If it's not a bottom line and they're just slow at learning how to implement it, you can then support them yes. in creating a structure that will solve that situation. If they're not willing to implement that structure and they cannot get better and I would like to, you know, I will say like wiggle room, like give them like three strikes and you're out, third strike. They're out because if you do the math, you're only going to get resentful mm -hmm. eventually at them, and it will it will deteriorate your quality of life and theirs as well. Yes, because there's you know, and again, like it, it's not all or nothing. It will turn into all or nothing, yeah. and you will be so on the nothing side of the stick, the relationship will be uncovered. So I would say when you do the, the emotional math, cut your losses ahead of time. At some point, somebody not being able to adjust their behavior is unacceptable. A lot of the coaching clients I work with have old traumas and lower self-esteem. So in order to help them with something mm -hmm. like this, I often recommend they make a decision. If you loved yourself, 
how would you react to this? Or if this was happening to your best friend or your sister, how would you react mm, to this? Because it normalizes it for you. If you have low self-esteem and you're so afraid there's not going to be enough in the world, you might be putting up with something that's borderline abusive or really abusive because you don't want to be alone or you don't, you're afraid you'll never get anything else. And abusive doesn't have to be malicious. Right. Because there are a lot of people out there who really are trying yeah. and they're just not making the grade. And that's a tough call. But I like that question because like, and for those of you with kids, like, would you want your son or your daughter to go through this? So for me, friends being late to the movies, well, I'll just make sure I have another, but I go with... That's not a deal breaker. Yeah, for I go you. with a couple of friends. For, for me, me, I'm not missing the trailers. I don't care who you are. So you get to decide what's right for you, um, what's important to you, and decide from there. Yeah. You may not want to engage with that person in that area. So we hope that helps. Comments below. What's your favorite trailer? <laughs> <laughs>